So without a doubt, this is easily the greatest real grade. No, 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 no. The greatest Bandai kit I have ever built and handled. Now, Crow, you know that is completely false. What makes you say that? Because everyone knows real grades are just hand grenades. It's no different with this kit as it is any other. All right, Steve. Can a real grade do this? And not one part fall off. Well, goddamn. So guys, without a doubt in my mind, this is easily the greatest Bandai kit I've ever built in my entire life. Um, I've built close to about 300 different kits, uh, all ranging from SD, high grade, uh, master grade, as well as perfect grade. Uh, the only two kits I would say that I really need to build to really, you know, just give it a 100% seal of... Um, you know validation that this is to me the greatest kit. Uh, I do need to build the real grade unicorn as well as the uh, perfect grade Exia. Have not built those and I know that they are uh, regarded as some of the best works of engineering uh, from Bandai to date. But I'm just gonna say this. This kit blew me away with every step of detail, every step of just the mecha uh, mechanics, um, just the functionality of it overall. And just the cherry on top is that this is a solid kit. I've never seen a real grade uh, like just this solid before my entire life. Um, there's really not that many small pieces. I would say all the small pieces really reside in the funnels as well as the head. Most of the body, the shoulders, legs and all that is generally going to be uh, more bulky big pieces. So when it comes to guys that have probably like bigger fingers um, or you know, big hands or whatever, uh, I, I don't think you're really going to have that much of a hard time building this kit. Um, so with uh, the formalities out of the way, let's go ahead and start taking a look at the details. Alright guys, so before I get into the details of this kit, I do want to let you know that, um, you know, obviously it's not detailed at all. There's no, um, you know, top coat, there's no paint details, panel lining, uh, stickers, or anything of that sort on this kit. Uh, and that's because I'm going to go ahead and paint it sometime in the future. Um, after building the legs, uh, once I got past building the legs, I was like, yes, I need to paint this kit because this thing is just so, so fantastic. And I, I love the way it looks. Um, so right now I'm going to wait until Bandai releases the water slides for it um, and then I'll snag those up grab some um, some extra little stuff here and there so that way I can do the funnel effects and then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start planning the painting but that probably won't happen until about December um, it's gonna have a lot of other projects kind of planned uh, but nonetheless let's go ahead and take a look at the details so looking at the head, the head looks pretty damn cool. Uh, a lot of people are saying that it's not proportion. Like I've seen quite a few people saying it's, it's too big for the body. I don't know, like it looks perfectly fine to me. Um, I don't really think there's any kind of issue, but maybe I don't have a keen eye on proportions. I know a lot of people like to refer to line art or the anime accuracy, but uh, keep in mind that the anime is extremely old, about a little bit over 30 years old. No, no, no it's not that old. Uh, yeah. So, 30 some years old, uh, the Shars Counterattack movie. So, um, I mean, honestly, it's just, I don't know. Like, I, I like to look at it as its own thing. I don't, I don't refer to this as the line art because um, this is very much not as accurate to the anime or the line art. This is very much, uh, I'm not going to say an original, like, kind of design, but it, the concept is, is fairly original when it comes to all the panel lines and gimmicks. Um, this definitely was not depicted in any kind of original art, at least to my knowledge. Uh, but looking at the head, uh, so I did put the sticker for the uh, mono eye as well as a little top sensor right there, and the details just look really, really good. Now it does have a little gimmick to where you can go ahead and pull this little part up like so and then you can drag this part down and that's just going to go ahead and show the mono eye like so and then the cockpit the cockpit is also inside um kind of, i mean you can't really see it but uh you know it's definitely known that the cockpit is definitely inside the head so other than that i mean i think it looks great i like the clear visor um so yeah that is a pretty dope looking head all right, so moving on with the body. Once again, this is very, very nice. I love how slim it is around the waist. Um, this is just definitely one part. And, you know, I, I honestly thought it was going to be, like, divided into multi-pieces. Um, that's just kind of like what I was thinking. But I decided to go with the little solid part, and, you know, I'm fine with that. I can just go ahead and paint that in the panel line uh, on the little, like, uh, seams right here or, like, the... Um, 
don't know, like the little tubing. And uh, right here definitely looks pretty good. Uh, so overall, I mean, the details on this is just, just crazy. There's no, like, I don't see any room for error. Um, now, when it comes to the waist, uh, you know, posability, uh, it, it's it's okay for the most part. Um, can't really do too much side to side. You gotta like move it around here, um, but it's not really gonna be too bad. Actually, it can go all the way around. So you just gotta kind of like mess with it. Um, now this part right here is gonna go ahead and move up and down like so. Not really too much, but then this part right here is also gonna have the ability if I can go ahead and get it. So that is actually gonna have its own individual posability. So that is going to be pretty damn good. Uh, so you can kind of pose that down and a little bit down like that. So overall, it is pretty you know pretty decent. The shoulders, however, right here don't really move. I thought they would, they would like kind of come out a little bit, uh, but they're gonna be pretty much uh, stationary like so. All right, so now moving to the arms. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and just say, you know, pretty much address the elephant in the room, the shoulders. Well, the shoulders, they are perfectly fine. So I don't know where where I honestly don't know where people were getting like um, the like the part to break. I, I don't even know like what was going on. I kind of seen some pictures, but honestly, I wasn't paying attention because I don't think that a model kit of this uh, caliber was really going to have any kind of defects. So the only thing I can think of is maybe like there's this little part right here that they didn't push they didn't push the part all the way down and they just kind of like start twisting it or roughhousing it and broke this little piece that uh kind of keeps this together that's that's just my synopsis I, I still have not looked at what was the issue with the uh shoulder people like telling me oh be careful with the shoulder i build kits the same way i've built kits like in the sense of like handling wise um i've been building the same way for about seven years and i'm sorry like that whatever happened with the shoulders is not bandai's fault that is people being too rough so i'm i'm just addressing this on this video there's absolutely nothing wrong with these shoulders they're perfectly fine um they're, they're actually really decent so they come out pretty far pretty far out like that um that have a little bit of a gap inside there but obviously as for the shoulder to rest in uh this is going to come up about that much uh, down about that far so it kind of rotates all the way around you have this shoulder piece that it's supposed to push all the way through onto uh, this little part sometimes it just kind of like slips off so you gotta like tighten that up a little bit but other than that it's not gonna have any issue once you uh, tighten it up all right so looking at the details of the shoulder the shoulder details is so so nice I just I love it and it's also gonna have like this heat exhaustion mode uh, so kind of just like uh, releases all that steam um, from like the, I guess the heat buildup and then these little front panels can uh, rotate up like so front and uh, on the back ones as well like so now they can also kind of rotate around uh, I don't really know the usefulness of this little gimmick uh, but hey it definitely is there if you want to go ahead and rotate these little front panels and then this uh, the little thrusters on the shoulder pads can definitely go up and down and now this shoulder part can also pretty much come all the way up like so. Now when it comes to the bicep, so you're obviously going to have a nice little bicep uh, swivel right there. But there is a little gimmick when it comes to the bicep. You can uh, take this little part right here, this little armor piece, and you can pop it out, right? And then you go ahead and you slide this ever so gently. And then you're going to slide the peg into one that's just above that peg that it originally went into. And all it's doing is kind of giving this just a little bit more range of movement. So you can kind of just uh, get a way better bend like so. Now let's take a look at the back. That, oh, when I see pistons that are kind of like moving like this, I mean, this is, this is great. This is, I can do this all day. This just looks so, so good. Um, I don't know. It's, it's just one of my little like, um, I don't know what you would call it. Kind of like my little things, you know, something I really, really enjoy when it comes to model kits. When they put that kind of engineering in there, it, I mean, that's why I love the Mark II so much because they had it like riddled all over in the, the legs and such. Um, but looking at the forearm, so the forearm armor is pretty good. Uh, no real issues whatsoever. Uh, you are going to have the beam saber right there, but it's just going to be uh, pretty much half of it, um, which I don't care. It's it pretty much takes up less room to be honest because I wouldn't want the entire beam saber through the arm because that would probably hinder some of the inner frame right inside there. Now you can also now you can also extend the forearm so if we're gonna go ahead we can take off this little piece well not take it off but slide this little piece out just a little bit if I can there we go so once you slide that out you can extend the forearm just like so 
Uh, so basically, whenever you hold like the beam saber, that part can come out here as well as like the um, the beam shot rifle. So snap that right back in, and now you have an extended form, which you know, really good, really really nifty idea. Then I don't know, like I just I love I love little little things like this, things that makes um, just handling the weapons that much easier. All right, now when it comes to the hands, you are gonna get some closed fists. And then you're gonna have two little fists right here that actually um, have basically a little peg in there so that way you can go ahead and plug in uh, the beam saber and they also have a nice little hinge right here at the wrist so that way they can go ahead and move up and down like so which I wish all the hands had this but um, the only ones that do are basically all of them except for the fixed uh, fist. And I forgot to mention the uh, the open hands right here. They don't have the uh, the bent wrist peg as well, so my fault for that. Uh, but overall, I mean the hands, I mean these open hands look pretty. I don't know, they look okay. I kind of wish they were a little bit more spread out, um, kind of like, like more like like that than like like I don't know like that. So um, doesn't really look too bad. Kind of look like he's a you know walking zombie or something like that. But they look pretty good and they kind of do their job. And then you're going to have an exclusive right hand that's going to be uh, for the rifle and that's pretty much going to be about it. Um, it does have a bent wrist so that way you can go ahead and uh, kind of pose that a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, you're only going to have a trigger finger for the right hand and that's it. Alright, so looking at the waist, um, the front skirts and everything looks really good, nice surface detail. Uh, basically it's going to be on these little like, um, it's already a pre-built like inner frame at least for the waist uh, top, top part of the waist at that uh, but they have some pretty good mobility so they can come up all the way and they do rotate but uh, you can just I'm not gonna say be careful but they kind of slip out of the little peg um, or like the little grip right inside there they kind of fall out not fall out but they pop out if you kind of like a little bit too rough with them uh, but it's not like anything major you could just snap it right back in so I won't even consider that a con now this front load part right here uh, this does come out ever so slightly so I guess more for just kind of releasing some steam and then uh, right inside here is going to be uh, basically like a uh, like I don't know what you would call this it's like a way to maneuver the hips so that way they can come out just a little bit more and I don't I guess that just gives it a little bit more height uh, which isn't a bad thing I just I don't know I never really found a use for this functionality like I, I never actively used it but I guess it's pretty cool so um, this this part right here is gonna come down as soon as you bring that down and you need to watch out because when you do that you won't be able to slide the uh, the little uh, stand piece right there this needs to be up before you uh, pretty much when you slide that um, so just make sure you're watching out for that because I you know I didn't really realize it until like I kind of put these back and then lifted this part up now looking at the side skirts basically for the thrusters and everything uh, these parts do slide out ever so gently um, so yeah they're pretty nice and go up and kind of like rotate a little bit back like so um, but yeah they lower pretty much thrusters on the side all right, so taking a look at the back skirt, uh, this thing is fantastic. It's heavily, heavily detailed, um, and it does have a gimmick much like the uh, the Master Grade Verka, which these little two parts uh, separate like so. Um, but overall, it's really, really nice. Um, just constant color separation, surface detail, and this is kind of what sold me on really wanting to uh, to paint this is just how much detail these things have. So even underneath it, it's just going to have a lot of piping and just just lots of surface detail so that's something i'm really excited for to go ahead and paint all right one more gimmick that the uh, the waist does have basically they kind of show you in the instruction uh, manual to go ahead and open this i don't really know what the purpose of that is um i mean i guess it looks a little bit, little bit cool um but yeah they want you to kind of open these parts up like so um then i didn't really see anything that kind of related to um like open hatch gimmicks for the front skirts because there really isn't any kind of like movement on these uh but it just kind of said hey widen this out and i'm like all right I, I guess so uh yeah if you want to go ahead and do that you definitely can all right so taking a look at the leg uh pretty much the upper portion of the uh the thigh right here doesn't really have that much surface detail it does have like some things right here and on the inside but not really too much uh going on now it does have some nice mobility obviously you can go ahead and rotate all the way right here and then this part is going to rotate all the way 
to the front pretty much and probably go a little bit higher actually yeah you definitely go a little bit higher than that uh so that's just ridiculous and then can just go all the way out and then obviously all the way back especially when you kind of move this little back skirt just backwards a little bit so it could definitely go out fairly well now when it comes to the bend right here uh basically it's going to be your I, I would just say like your average bend on a normal like gundam kit but with this being such a bulky Xeon suit, like this is very, very impressive. I just, I don't know, like I didn't think this was really gonna happen, although it'd be kind of like, you very limited, but yeah, this is, the, the separation and everything going on right here is just like so, so cool. So very happy about that. Um, not gonna be any kind of issues whatsoever. And then coming down here on the bottom part of like the uh, the front of the shin. Uh, so basically this like little ankle skirt right here can, uh, can has like a little bit of mobility so it can go up and down that far, but definitely goes in and out. Now the uh, back part right here for like the calf, all this like back skirt, um, this is just like two solid pieces that just connect. Um, so that's not gonna move, but this right here, this little side piece, this can definitely uh, move out like so, which contains a thruster. And then these little thrusters, these can move down just a little bit. So I don't really know what that was, what that's for. Like it's kind of weird, but hey, any kind of movement I guess isn't really too bad. Now since we're looking at the uh, the bottom right here, look at this detail. Like there's so much you can do here, and there's not any kind of like room. There's no hollow points. There's no room for like. I don't know, no room for error. I mean, this is just perfect looking, like definitely a beautiful looking foot. Now when it comes to the articulation, the articulation is gonna be pretty damn cool. Um, basically going to move all the way up here. So basically tucking itself right inside the, uh, the front armor and then kind of just moving down and the points, oh God, this is just, look at that. I mean, I've, I just, I don't see, I don't see kits like this. I mean, obviously the Massagrave Verka, I mean, yes, it has a lot of these points and this is just kind of a smaller version of that. But I mean, that's why it's so impressive because it's a smaller version and you don't see this in the one in 144 scale. At least I don't, I don't really see it, but I don't, I don't build a lot of Xeon kits. So maybe I don't really see it as much as other people. Now it is going to get some nice side to side movement like so. So basically side right there and then all the way to the side over there um that's just i don't know that's great there's a lot of movement going on with this and you're not going to have any kind of difficulty pulling some dynamic poses off on the ground with this kit all right so before we look at the entire backpack i just want to take a look at this part right here uh so the first thing you want to do is basically pull this out like so so it's going to go ahead and extend like so and it's going to push this up just a little bit and that's going to allow you to go ahead and just ever so slightly take these to the side now uh, I, at one point when I did all this, uh, these kind of got a little bit loose. I don't know why, but ever since then, I didn't really have any issues. So I don't know if that was just me kind of like messing around or I didn't like put it in there uh, tight enough. But yeah, you're definitely going to have the, uh, the ability to go ahead and just like pull this out. And it's not really going to have any kind of issues whatsoever. Now, also, there's going to be a lot of good details right inside there. So the only problem I'm going to have is when I'm using my effect parts, uh, the little like tubing, the... the clear pipes I'm gonna have to go ahead and just like maybe shave this down right here uh, and then kind of drill a little hole so that way I can go ahead and put the little um, the little clear pipe inside there that's gonna connect into here as well so kind of like use it as a kind of like a little extender but uh, this is gonna be a little bit far in the future and then we're looking at the funnel so uh, basically it's gonna be pretty cool you just open up all these little little panels right here and you're gonna go ahead and push this in like that so there you go you have now a little uh funnel that can just go ahead and fly around so i definitely encourage you to go ahead and uh buy some piping and just kind of like make these fly i mean if you want to use a stand you can do that but uh, i'm gonna go ahead and use some pipes and that's just gonna make this just a little bit better than the stand because the stand's so bulky and noticeable but using like the little like clear tubes that shouldn't have any kind of problems um and you can also paint them to kind of like look like um you know thruster effects all right, so we're looking at the backpack. Uh, basically, these can kind of like move around just a little bit up and down, like so. Uh, but you gotta watch out. This kind of pops out if you're a little bit rough, like like I just was. Uh, but it's not gonna break. I haven't had any kind of issue with this uh, breaking whatsoever. All right, so we're looking at this part right here. Basically, you can go ahead and lift this up like so. And then this one little thruster right here, you can kind of just move this up and down like so. Uh, just kind of like you know, directional kind of thrust. Uh, so it's, instead of it always kind of being down here, you can definitely push it up 
just a little bit like so. So I know it's a little bit dark, but um, yeah, you can definitely do that with that part and that just kind of clips right back in. And then with these, uh, you can kind of just move these around. Uh, they're, they snap all the way in, so um, there we go. So I kind of pushed it out just a little bit and it gives it more of a range of movement. So definitely, um, if you're gonna go ahead and put it in, don't just kinda like half-ass it and just push it like that because it's not gonna be all the way in. You gotta push it just one more time, so it's like two clicks that you're gonna hear, and then it's gonna be uh, all the way inserted. And also there's this little gimmick right here, so these little panels kinda just open up like so. Uh, didn't really know what that's for, but it's dope. <laughs> it's like really, really cool, so uh, I definitely enjoy this. And, that, and I just, man, I, I love the back of the mobile suit, like, Oh, like pr pretty much equally as much as I do the front. It just, I don't know, it's so, so damn cool whenever you see these kind of gimmicks. So I do encourage you to go ahead and, um, I don't know, maybe get a get a multi-stand or get a mirror on the back of this um, if it's gonna be in your case. That way you can just see the back as well as the front. All right, so we're looking at the rifle. Uh, basically nothing really too crazy with this. Uh, looks really good, um, has a lot of good details right here with all the red, that's just one part on the inside that has all these like little red pieces uh, as well as the top, like all this red is just one part. And then this is just gonna be like a little pump action. So uh, yeah, the beam shot rifle is pretty cool and I would love to paint this thing up because uh, I don't know, I, I, I just think like a nice like silver on here is just gonna be so, so good. Or I'll just do like a uh, glossy black with silver lining all inside. So I like it and it looks pretty, pretty damn cool. And here it is with the rifle. So that thing just looks so, so cool. And it's, I don't know, like I, I just love this thing on the ground. Like I, I liked it uh, in the air because I put it on a stand and kind of played around with it. Uh, but man, this thing on the ground looks so, so cool. And just having that wide range of posability with like the ankles uh, being able to pivot, um, just nothing, no, no issues with the legs whatsoever. Uh, the front skirts look pretty damn cool like the arms can be all dynamic um you know i i just say i would just say that this kit looks just phenomenal uh on the ground and with that rifle all right next is going to be the beam saber so you're going to have these little beam effect parts uh, and they basically just plug right into uh the beam hilts and here it is with the beam saber um so i mean looks pretty cool it's, a, it's pretty much your basic beam saber but it does have a great bright color to it so that kind of like fluorescent uh green looks amazing and i know a lot of people complain about it not being in like its uh, original like colors uh which is supposed to be yellow i mean th this i think this is just taken from the uh, uh Sazabi, if i'm not mistaken so i don't know like it to me it really doesn't matter uh the colors because once again this isn't i don't think this is 100 percent anime accurate anyways um so i just kind of look at it as its own thing so uh i mean green is a great color uh green just really matches with the mono eyes um i mean the yellow will look good as well but um to be honest i do actually prefer the green so next is gonna be the beam tomahawk. So it's just only gonna be a couple pieces, not really too much. Um, it looks really good. Overall, I do rather enjoy it. So you can go ahead and plug in all these little extra parts right here on the side. And then that's gonna go ahead and give you like a little beam ax. Uh, you can just take off one side if you want, not the whole part, but you can definitely take off one side. And it's kind of like more traditionally like a, like a little mini ax. Or you can add like the little middle beam saber effect part right there and you can just basically extend all this so that definitely looks really really good or if you want you can just go ahead and uh keep it like is uh like so now what you also get is going to be some of these parts from the uh the real great sananju um so you can go ahead and plug these in like so as well and that's just going to give you a massive massive beam effect weapon and if you want, you can go ahead and add the little middle beam saber right there, and it's just gonna make this thing way more massive than what it probably should be. Now also, you're gonna have this nice little shield right here. Uh, looks pretty good. I just went ahead and put that little sticker right there, the little Xeon uh, symbol. The uh, underside, I mean, it looks really good. Uh, they got a lot of holes right inside here, which I don't r really know what that's supposed to do. Uh, I, have, I didn't see any kind of like connection points for anything. Uh, but this little part right here that connects to the uh, forearm, or actually the back of the arm, it's uh, supposed to come down, but it's a little bit rough. So I'll just say, just be careful in the case you may be able to break it, but it's just supposed to move on these little grooves. So it basically goes up and down like so. 
All right, and the way to go ahead and mount this up is just by utilizing these little pegs on the form right there. But right before we get into that, uh, you can put the tomahawk right on uh, on the shield. So it's pretty simplistic. All you can do is just kind of like put it right inside um, this little like hole right inside there uh, and it goes on two little pegs now you can not adjust it but you're gonna have to take off these little missiles uh, so all you're gonna do is just kind of take this off and you're gonna readjust it up to here uh, right there so you can go ahead and move it either right here or inside there however you want to do it now this is just gonna be if you want to store it uh, you can definitely do so by just uh, kind of just putting it right inside there and you can still keep the little missiles all right, now when it comes to the mobility of the uh, the shield, it can definitely rotate uh, quite a bit. So it does have uh, some rotation uh, right here. So this is gonna allow it to go up and down like that. So it can kind of go a little bit over the forearm uh, instead of going underneath, um, but not really too much else. Uh, it can kind of come back a little bit um, and just a little bit of rotation. So not really a crazy amount of things, but um, overall it's not gonna be too bad. The shoulders are gonna get in the way quite a bit uh, whenever you are posing it. And here's the shield. Well, overall it looks pretty damn good. Uh, I'm pretty excited to go ahead and paint this in the future because I'm just, I'm just calculating all the different poses I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. But um, for right now, I mean, this looks really good and the shield uh, is very, very sturdy. It definitely stays in the arm uh, fairly well. So you're not really gonna have any kind of issues or problems uh, when it comes to uh, posability with this shield. All right, and lastly, we're just gonna go ahead and show you the, uh, the little stand piece. So much like all real grades, or even like a lot of massive grades, they have a little connecting uh, part because a lot of them are gonna have like a little peg hole. Uh, so this is just gonna connect and slide right underneath there. And then this little part can slide on, um, you know, out of the, uh, the little high grade stands that um, you can kind of plug different types of uh, connectors to, or you can just connect it to a little, I think it's a three millimeter uh, peg right there. All right, so in conclusion, overall, the Sazabi Real Grade is a phenomenal looking kit. Um, it doesn't really have many to any flaws at all. Uh, the accessories that it comes with is pretty damn good. So overall, I just thoroughly enjoyed every single second of building this kit. Also, the color separation is top notch. There's a lot of different offsets of the uh, the red and just the overall black and the gray inner frame looks super, super good and just crisp and clean. And this kit is just really gonna have that nice shelf presence no matter what pose you put it in or how you're gonna go ahead and organize it. Also, here is to hoping that we can get a real great new Gundam. I don't have the high grade new, I only have the master grade Verka. So having, uh, you know, already have the Verka for both and the master grades, it'd be nice to have both of the real grades since I'm not really too interested in getting the high grade version, but it'd be a nice companion to have right on the shelf. And lastly, the one thing I wanna go ahead and let y'all know about is I do firmly believe that this kit is just worth the price tag. Um, I, I just, I really feel that if you're into anything that is um, pretty much about the Xeons or if you're into real grades, this kit is just super, super gorgeous and it's just gonna be so nice on your shelf. I can't emphasize that enough. Um, so if I can implore you, definitely, you know, save up your money if, uh, if you're kind of low on funds um, or I would maybe just wait for a sale, something along those lines because this kit is just super, super amazing and I would put this even over my favorite kit, which would be the Master Grade Age 1 Normal. So if y'all can, definitely pick this up. But other than that, guys, uh, definitely, you know, thank you for watching this review. It's always a pleasure to have y'all here. And as always, just, uh, you know, make sure you catch the next review and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.